That's what I was supposed to do in class today. My daughter said I'm supposed to figure out alligator. Oh, there are two others. Escape me. Um. Rad. Um, I was wondering if we, if we get a chance, if we might be able to go through um, a little more about our, our assignments that are going to be coming up here, and also about the language journal and stuff, um, just so that we've got a little more understanding over here. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> so, <laughs> the language <laughs> journal is um, really sort of for your own records. I think I put something in the syllabus years ago that I would actually look at this thing, but I never do. Uh, this is it's really more of a suggestion than anything. But what I find is uh, something that I see a lot of successful students have and something that I had while I was studying Clinkit was I had dedicated journals just for, I mean, it's fine to have notebooks and all kinds of stuff and to have multiple notes all over the place, but I think it's really helpful to have an actual thing that's just for the language. And then all of your language thoughts could go in there. I think it's a really good exercise to keep this. It's not so much a diary, but it is chronicling your language journey. And so I have stacks of these things. And, and so when someone would tell me a new word, that's exact. I would write it down right there. <laughs> because as I went back to because the, the, the thing that can happen is they also have tons of pieces of paper. Sometimes they can't remember what they told me. Sometimes I can't remember where I put them. Sometimes I find them years from now, and I think, gee, that would have been nice to know. <laughs> and so it's, it's, a, and it's a place where you can also speculate on some of the things that you're figuring out with Clinkit. And I think that's really fun, too, uh, because we're always in this state of discovery with the language, especially unless we were born speaking it with speakers all around us, then there's just so much that you're constantly discovering about the language. And I think it's good to have that, because then you could go back. And sometimes you're going back and you're saying, oh, yeah, this is when I figured this out. Or, boy, I was way off on this thing. But I think having those types of things help you, and they probably help you to reflect on how you came to learn the language as well. So years from now, when you know the language much better, and then you, sometimes it helps to go through these things and look, especially if you become a teacher, because you'll think, oh yeah, this is, I remember when I learned this, and then maybe that'll help you to sort of think of um, other things. And the other idea behind a language journals to try and give you more tools and more ideas and more encouragement mm -hmm. to be in the language while we're outside of class. And so a lot of things we do in class are sort of technical. We're going to learn this word. We're going to learn this phrase. But as far as how all those things get put together in your mind so that you achieve a state of fluency, that's a, there's a lot of pressure on you to do those things. Uh, so that's the journal. We have, um, we've only turned in one set of words so far. Uh, we'll go over them next week. And uh, Thursday, we'll do a little bit more sort of checking in on midterms and what's expected of you. But the general idea is we're learning a bunch of content. Uh, there's going to be a final exam on the content that we've learned. So everything that we go over in here, it might end up on a final exam. Uh, the final exam for this class will consist of reading, writing, speaking, and comprehension. Those are the four areas of, of language, right? So if I say something in Clinkit, can you tell me, can you respond appropriately, right? If I say, what's up, cook, what tea? What would be the right answer for something like that? Yeah, okay, see you, duck, satan. Right, that is the correct answer, and so, and we'll get to that. So that if I were to ask you a question in Clinkit, could you respond? You know, and I'm not saying you need to know the weather, but that's a pretty good prediction for Juno. Uh, and then the other component would be there might be a list of words or phrases, and we'll all take turns reading them. So you should be able to look at something, and at this point, by the end of the semester, especially by the end of the year. I should be able to give you anything, and you should be able to read it with a pretty high level of accuracy. 
And then the other thing is being able to, to speak the language so that if I were to say, OK, um, tell me where your clan comes from. And you should be able to do, you know, even though you, they might be sort of fragmented thoughts and, and you're sort of, you know, and we may know the story and we're piecing that story together, but you should be able to really do some of these things like we lived here, then we moved here, you know, and then, you know, these types of, you know, then we fought with this, right, so this is the clan fill in the blank, right, we lived here, right, but you should be able to sort of do some things like that. Some of the things I'll also be expecting of you is, I might say, uh, describe, um, tell me five things. Let's all take, because you know, we've been doing, um, as far as language progression, we've been doing some stuff like, let's all name animals, let's all name birds, let's all name plants, right? So really I'm trying to encourage you to recall the names of things. We're just doing noun work. But they'll reach a point where I'll be saying things like, tell me five things about moose. Tell me some things about a porcupine. And now we're, we're getting to the point where you can talk about things. Right? So this is, it's a big, this is the language transition. And then we start going into, you know, what are some things that make you angry? What are some things that make you happy? Right? And so these, then we're getting into emotions and being descriptive. <laughs> And this is how language gets dynamic. Right? There's a lot of what we do with language, explaining, communicating, dealing with feelings, dealing with, you know. And then there's dealing with, generally, past, present, and future. And then tying <coughs> some different ideas together. So with all that, your midterm is memorizing a list of words standing up in front of us without any notes. You, well, you can have notes. Uh, you cannot have the words written down. I don't know what that beeping is. Hold on. I'll check it out in a second. <laughs> okay, who is it? Probably. Okay, I'm going to send an invitation to a couple of people. Let's see. <clears throat> Okay, sorry, I had to resend the invite to some folks. Uh, and so, uh, as far as you know, the types of words that you're choosing to, to memorize, uh, that's why I really encourage you to have some sort of theme that ties these things together. When I've seen students who have been successful, sometimes they're memorizing a list of things. And so they will get up and they'll actually write one, two, three, four, and then they'll fill in their words. Other times they're sort of, they draw a picture and they tell a story where they have some pictures. You know, if you wanted to bring in those pictures of the animal and that helps you or whatever it is, and that helps you to recall it, that's fine as long as the clinket is not written on there anyway. So that's your job is to stand up and to um, to recall what your words are. And let me make sure. Let me see if anybody else has some pause. Uh, anybody who's been in these classes before want to comment on memorizing and recalling lists of words? Following a story is quite following a story is quite the easiest way. Um, and that way, there's a progression. One thing leads to the next. Right. So if, if there's some logic that ties it together, places I've seen uh, students have a hard time. And I'm not in your life. I don't have drones out there yet watching you and seeing if you're <laughs> studying the language. I think. I have aspirations. We'll get there. We'll have like spies and other things out there. And they'll tell me, and then we can, you know, send our our mob squad over to deal with them. Uh, but 
in the meantime, um, some of the things, uh, I think seeing students, sometimes I can say, OK, I have this saying sometimes to say, you know it until you have to show it, right? And that, that's, that happens. I know students where I can say, OK, what's your list of words? And they could tell me once they stood up um, to recite them, then they might have a hard time sort of doing so. And then the other thing about midterms and finals is I don't broadcast those classes. So those are just a Google Hangout between us. So instead of a broadcast sort of a thing open to the public, it's really just a between, between us. And it's not recorded. That way, you know, there's less pressure. Oh, I forgot my word. And now anybody in the universe can watch me struggle. Uh, the other thing that I think has led to struggles for some students is just opening the dictionary to page 200 and just grabbing a list of words. Right? Because th there's sometimes no thread to logically tie those things together. So if you had to memorize five nouns, maybe you do the five types of salmon. And then maybe your verbs are fishing and cutting and cooking. And then you have some other things as well. So some of the things we're also trying to do is encourage you to think about nouns, to think about verbs, and to think about everything that's in between those two. And that's really the, the entirety of a language. You know, most languages have nouns, they have verbs, and they have all these things in between. And so we're going to look at how Clinkit generally takes care of those things. Um, and then you'll have chances to choose some of those things as your words. And so that's what we call the language uh, demonstration. Um, and I think we have um, a 10-minute presentation for the final exam. And I think there's, there's a three-page paper in Clinkit as well. But I think what we should probably do is move that to the final, just so you have time to put all of those things together. But don't sit around and wait. I would like a three-page double-spaced paper entirely written in the Clinkit language about some subject. Uh, you're not really um, graded for ground. It's not like a composition class right, where I'm going to get my red pen out and, and mark it up. But I want to see if you can hold an extended sort of um, discussion. Well, I mean, you would mark it up as saying Spelt things wrong, though, right? Or put out right. tone marks? Right? Yeah, I'll give you feedback. <laughs> <clears throat> and then working with a partner to do a 10-minute presentation on a topic of your choice. So those are the assignments that we're dealing with in this class. Your language demonstration is October 20th and 22nd. Gosh, we should probably do another pack of words at some point. <laughs> Not really following my schedule. But did I even have it written down? Does it say that? What, the words? Uh-huh. When I, yeah. I don't does it, I don't know. I haven't listened um, to it. So I do know we're supposed to be at like page 175 by next week in this book. Are we on this about? No, not a hundred. It was supposed to be a ways uh, in one? there. No way. Where's <laughs> So there is a text that we'll be using in this class. Um, we're going to, we're moving a little bit slower than <laughs> I planned. Uh, let's see. Well, let me see if I can get Carol into the class. Lance? Vasa? You want to talk a bit more about these word lists? Sure. So uh, Clinkit, um, the, one of the things that I ask you to email me is a list of words that you're committing to memorizing. For your midterm, you will stand up in front of the class and you'll recite about 25 words. Um, and so you, you've got some time to sort of uh, select what your words will be. Uh, usually we've done this in sort of chunks. Um, I think I've only asked you for one list so far. 
and that list was five nouns, three verbs, two of something else. Is that right? One of something else. That's easy. One of something else. So that's five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight words. So for example, you know, so we got nouns, verbs, and then something else. We're going to go over through the course of the semester what these something else's are. Uh, for now, you know, you can just sort of grab one and we can talk about how they function. We'll talk more and more how they function. <coughs> we'll have a couple classes dedicated to going over your words for pronunciation and just to sort of talk about how they, how they work a little bit more. Your verbs could be in any form. And I would consider you can use uh, one verb in many different modes. So if your verb was he or she walks, then you could one verb could be a dewugu. He or she walked over there. A deyanuk. He or she is walking there now. A dekakwagud. He or she is going to walk there. So that's all the same verb. But I would consider it three different verbs for our purposes because it's in three different modes. And we'll talk about those different modes and how you conjugate for those things in Clinkit. But let's start right now. But let's start right now. Send me. Send me. Oh. Send me eight more words by Thursday. So it gets us up to 16, five nouns, three verbs, one of something else. Okay. And if you haven't done so already, send me 10 nouns. <laughs> I'd be on um, 19, or 18, sorry, I can't count either. Because I'd be like five, five, eight, six, three, nine, okay, 18. 18. So it gets us to 18. It's 16. almost all the way there. It's on 16. <laughs> Five nouns, three verbs, and one of something. Else. <laughs> 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 three verbs on top of <laughs> And then the steen ka, Okay. Any other questions? Uh, um, I think as a result of some of the comments last night at the school board, ended a debate that we should make it a goal to work with fluent speakers to create words to describe science or other concepts like that. Do you want to? Uh, I mean, it's like you need a sciencey person, though. Oh well, yeah, but I mean, because uh, so I don't have science <laughs> terms in my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever those maybe need to add them, like you know, basic things. Or, you know, just, and especially as a result of some other comments. Do you want to, there's a lot of people who weren't here yeah. yesterday, you want to um, share that first? Well, last night at the school board candidate meeting for, for the Juno School Board, um, I went, and during the question and answer portion, I asked all five candidates who are running for school board whether they would support a Clinket language immersion school. And only one person openly supported it, which was um, the school board member, Andy Story. She's on the school board right now. Um, there was some other hesitation, um, mostly due to um, financial burdens. Um, I mean, that's that's a poor excuse, but the most upsetting um, opposition to a Clinket language immersion school was that one candidate was concerned Clinket couldn't convey concepts such as science. Um, that's pretty ridiculous, like any language can convey anything. You might have to make up new words, but mm -hmm. that happens all the time in English. We make up new words all the time. 
So I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. Yolo in the ring. Dictionary. So. Is you can say. And then I made a Facebook status about everything that happened, and it completely blew up. It was shared to like 20 different groups, which is crazy. I was not expecting that. Um, and then there was there were some comments by um, individuals in the community. Ooh, <laughs> It, it was like talking to a brick wall. Um, a racist brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> One person in particular who, I mean, they just, it was just dumb. It was bad. They were stupid. And I really wanted just to tell them that they were stupid. Did um, you know they were being racist? Or is one of those like, no, like, I think that a lot of people don't even realize yeah. they're being racist. Which is and, and so, um, it's called news. I think what I've come to realize is there are some people you can't sway by telling them that it's possible for Clinkit to convey concepts like mm -hmm. science. I mean, you can't just tell people that and they'll believe you. You actually have to do it. Mm -hmm. if, if it actually happens, there's no way people can say it's impossible. It's so interesting because people can say this without yeah. knowing anything about the language, uh, yeah. right? So in Clinkit, I can ask you to hand me things and it will tell you exactly what type of object it is, which tells you exactly yeah. how you have to carry that thing. I could tell you about breaking something. Like, we were reading this story last night, and they used the verb for breaking. Like, this bear tears the arms off of a person who's his father. Right. Let's just start with that. And the verb is to break a rope-like object. Right? And it just does things in your mind to, to just consider this stuff. And English cannot do that. And so English can do it, but it can do it in different ways. And so some people, they just, no, no. And there's such a superiority complex that's rooted in people, especially if they're, like, how mongolots, such an awesome word. It's somebody who's monolingual, oh, right? Uh, and it's, it's a derogative. It's yeah. kind of like, it's not a nice term in a lot of the places where it's used, where you're expected to know several languages. Like, which is, like, the ironic thing is, like, if a lot of these people who are of European descent lived in Europe, they would probably know a bunch of languages, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and now they would in speak America, casually accepted. minimum is three usually. Yeah. yeah, right. And, and they, you would be considered kind of stupid. <laughs> yes, for not knowing more than one language, right? And and or it's not just knowing their language. Right. So there's anyway, so there's all kinds of places we go with conversations like this that <laughs> then sort of. Well, it sort of assumes that we're stupid. We go yeah. get science. You know, like. Can I mention something here? Mm -hmm. One, George Carlin put it really nicely. He says, flapjacks, batter cakes, hot cakes. We have seven words for battered bread, basically, but only one word for love. Whereas in Turkish, there's at least three different words for love. So it's the mode of the language that can convey something. It just stresses something else, and it adapts to what it needs to do. So in Turkish, they don't really have a whole lot of vocabulary for science, but they worked around it and they've adopted, you know, external words from French, German, English, and things like that to work around it. Their concepts address science in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, there was an elder. They have, uh, sorry, a complete. In Turkey, they have a, what's called a Turkish whistle language, where they can like whistle these different tones, huh. and it, they, it's like a, a, a legit language. Like it's so cool. To me. Like, wow. I was like, what? On that was love. That's interesting because there's like a really um, kind of like new philosophical like approach to change the, the idea of philosophy from the love of wisdom to the wisdom of love. And I think that'd be a good starting point. Like, right. Find that. If you think about it, English only has one word for love. Yeah. It kind of shows you why there's only use it for all of it. Why there's yeah. ignorance. Yeah. Okay. We gotta get into the clink. <laughs> gotta get into the clink. There's lots of arguments to be made. It's important. Cheesh for going there for representing. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about uh, this text that we should be getting into. Um, 
So I'll put it on the screen here for a second. So this is the cover. It's uh, not really published yet. Some of you might have it. What version you have should be named for what types of typos are in this book. <laughs> because it gets, there's really interesting sets of typos. I am a very terrible speller. And I also have a hard time spell checking a document that has these huge lists of clunky in it. But I, find, I figured out a way to get around that. Within the tables, there's probably still a bunch of things. And there's probably still tons of errors in this whole uh, thing. But I'll, I'll give you the sort of genealogy of this project. Um, I have theme music, apparently. It's a <laughs> story. It's so weird. Why did you start playing? While James is shouting at me while I'm putting my words to the Just take a quick break. Question. It's power. Yeah. Jeez, kick it, jeez. Question. Cajun, question. Intermediate clinket. Has a way a dot yeji would make it. Has yeji would make a what a dot. Kayokne, Kwahinak, Kapi Shabu. Yakunakak to us a goo and Yakuk aya would do the yehi. Akoa. Kunach a kawa chuck has to yeach in the yee. Has to be in a kawa nick, a kunach away a sunny quiet nap. We are to us a good way of dark age a honey. Yeah, one age a honey, a poa a hun a honey away a keek. Do in yuk up the time, a yuk a tongue da. Dad yaks away a yuk a tongue ya kunach if the cut. At Heritage Foundation, Yadu Akwal Nask Tauk Kanak Yejahane Shetahini at Wuskuku Ayahit Dishi Kahasu Zeosh Studakan Kagi Shawu Hoyinak Hutsu Weha Duhuku Atunak Aya Hotunuch Ya Yadak was a Wush to the two wush to cut you on. Ya cook a ya shitty agent. So I've been working on this thing for probably about three years now, although the project probably gets its start ten years ago, maybe seven, five. So I was reading through Intermediate Club, <coughs> which was in a draft form from Richard Knorr, Dowen Hauer, and then it got passed along to Carrie Edwards, uh, Eggleston now. And then uh, I was reading it, and I was asking to do some work on it. I started off by updating some illustrations and using that material and then formatting things. Then it started to change a lot as sort of my understanding of Clinkett's developed and, and conversations with um, James Crippen uh, who's a very close colleague and, and friend of mine. Uh, and then also conversations with Seth Cable and Kerry Eggleston, and Richard Dowenhauer, and looking through the notes of Jeff Lear and occasionally having conversations uh, with him or through other people to him. And then uh, Richard Dowenhauer kind of said, well, yeah, maybe you should develop your own thing instead of shifting intermediate clinket. Uh, and, and which is what I wanted to do, and then I got contacted by Gold Belt Heritage Foundation, 
who asked if I would help uh, develop a series of books on how to understand clinket verbs. So this project was called Understanding the Clinket Verb for a long time, but then when it got done and I was having different people review it for accuracy and I was getting tremendous uh, support from the language community, the linguistics community, fluent elders on some of these <coughs> concepts, uh, the name changed. And so when we were fighting for House Bill 216, uh, a lot of my testimony was done alongside Kaseh Selina Eberson. And I remember her saying one time, and it just stuck with me, like our language healed us or saved us or fixed us. And so I really I liked that. And then Seth Cable suggested that the title I had was not, it didn't cover what the, the, the text was actually covering. And so um, this book is designed to get you up to the point where you can really start to talk about clinket verbs and grammar. And the idea is you're supplementing that with lots of interactions with fluent speakers and other learners and recordings of Clinkit so that you're not just getting this um, grammatical sort of explanation of how the, the language is structured, although by the end you have a pretty good idea of how the language is structured. And so the structure of the language, it, it gives you the ability to be a dynamic speaker, conjugating verbs, coming up with complex sentences, continuing to build your warehouse of nouns, verbs, and other parts of speech. Um, there's thousands of verbs out there. They're incredibly, incredibly uh, dynamic. Um, and so by Thursday, we haven't really talked about, we haven't spent a lot of time with beginning clinket and a raven story, which was really fun. You know, sometimes, a lot of times I had a syllabus, and then we just sort of drift around in the ocean, somewhat aimlessly at times, but always with some mission as far as where we're going. Um, so this is, you know, so you should read. There's a beginning section. Uh, this, these are the table of contents. Uh, I'll, there's a link. I'll probably have to send you guys an updated link or put it on, uh, at least update the link on the intermediate Clinkit section of clinkitlanguage.com. Uh, but let's get through this section called nouns. So these other sections, the Clinkit language, this talks about uh, just the Clinkit language in general. Um, grammatical terms, these are the types of terms that we're going to be using in this class, among others. Uh, some fundamental concepts, just so you can start getting used to hearing these things. And then there's some information on learning Clinkit. It's my personal perspective on learning Clinkit. There are many others that are out there. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to buy into this particular process. And then we're going to go through nouns. And so we're going to be all done with nouns. Um, this explains the, the types of nouns. And we've touched on this a little bit. Uh, so hopefully you're able to read these, um, these pages. And then what I would like to do by next Tuesday is move into this tricky nouns and this modifying nouns section so we can be done with nouns and start moving on to other things. We'll still spend time in class going through some of the beginning Clinkit stuff. Um, there's some chapters we haven't covered yet. And it'll hopefully balance us between moving through these big lists of things and then also having some activities that help us to continue to understand how to conjugate verbs and how to use the language more dynamically. Uh, so by Thursday, you can read up to this noun section. And then by Tuesday, so that's up to page 60, I think, and then by next Tuesday up to uh, about page 86. And then we'll talk, and this will spend a lot of time talking about these types of things. Uh, again, I'll update a link. If you want a print version, there's a place where you'll be able to buy a print version. There's, there's no markup on it. It's just straight the cost of printing, and I think it's about 45 bucks. I was trying to update it this weekend, but I was having some difficulties. Uh, but in the meantime, you can go to clinkitlanguage.com under intermediate Clinkit. The link to this text is there, and you can just download it and print it yourself if you want to. Uh, there's two versions. There's um, one that's called a web version. Uh, the main difference between the web version 
is a two-page spread is right there. So if you were to print it, it would always be two pages on one piece of paper. But it's designed to read easier on a laptop or on a tablet, especially. Uh, if you're going to use one for printing the individual pages, you want it to be a little bit larger, there's another link that has print or mobile in parentheses. And uh, it works better for mobile to have one page um, as far as if the book were physically there, it's one page per screen, whatever it's called. Uh, otherwise, it, it's too small to read. Um, it's probably too small to read on a phone anyway. So at least uh, you can switch one page at a time. Any questions? We're okay. Is this version good to read? I mean, I'm in the same place. I'm in the same place. All I've done is fix typos. <laughs> You know, I can't spell the word language. I can't. It's impossible. I'll never be able to spell it. I should just never say it. I should never write that word. But my profession, I read that word all the time. Yeah. Language in English? Yes, the, the <laughs> word. Like, I spell like language, like a 12 gauge shotgun. Nice. Coming at you with my language. What English is? I don't know. Maybe that's just a better way. That's just a better way to spell it. Apparently that's not how you spell it. Nobody tell you. Okay, so here we go. Everybody repeat after me. Das away e your teen. 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 You could also say Das a e your teen. Das a e your teen. So the wet on there is it just helps for flow, I think. <coughs> So we're going to uh, do just a little bit of question and answer with some of these nouns. And we've gone over these nouns before. But this gives us just to push the pattern a little bit. So let's do this. I'll say, I'll say dasa yatin. And you will say, for example, zait khatin. Now everybody say Zait Khatin. Zait Khatin. I say, what do you see? You see, and you say, I see Zait. Right, and we'll just go one at a time. So we'll start with Zait, and we'll go down to Tsa, and we'll just continue to go through. So some of the things you should be doing is continuing to go through this thing. Uh, I'll just say, you will not become a fluent, I mean, your odds are very low of becoming a Clinkit speaker if you don't do stuff outside of our meetings. So the things that you can do outside of our class meetings, going through this and making sure, if I were to put a picture up of all these different things, would you be able to name them without any text there whatsoever? If you were to see these things out in the world, name them. Say their name, you know, make the language come out of your body as much as possible. Make the language go into your ears as much as possible. Uh, so you should be learning all of these. You should know all of these nouns. You should know all of these phrases. Um, this is we're still sort of in a bit of a review mode, uh, perpetually. But we'll keep going. Okay. Dasa yatin. 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 Okay, so we did these pronouns again. First person, second person, third person. First person is what? 
Me, right? The speaker is referring to the self, right? The speaker talks about the self. This is me. Second person is what? You. You. So this is somebody that you were talking to, a one person that you were talking to. Third person is what? Him or him. Him or her, he or she, right? So let's just, we'll review these quickly. So there is, somebody tell me the difference between independent, possessive, object, and subject pronouns. Gook. Independent pronouns. Independent, they, so that's like, right? Yeah. That's an independent. I don't know why it's independent, but I just know that it's one not, is not tied to anything grammatically. Oh, okay. it's on its own. It's free, right? So that would be why it's independent, right? Right. It's in. So it's me. Here I am, right? Because in in English, that's a verb, right? Here I am. Or I'm here. Maybe. But in Klingit, it's not a verb. There's no verb there. Ya do chet. You do chet. You could say that. That's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over there. I'm way over there. <laughs> I'm going insane. Uh, Aya? Yeah. Aya. I'm just me. Right? Or if someone, yeah, someone might say, you know, go, go, go. You knock on the door. I do so way. Chataya, kone. It's me. Kone. Or I get to say, chataya. And you should know what I sound like. <laughs> okay. Possessive? By expressing ownership. Yeah, expressing ownership or a relation, right? So you could say, my mom. That's my mom. She's mine. But you're just really probably saying, that, yeah, I'm related to her. That's my mom. And you got to think of it that way and clink it, because it does have ownership, like, you know. You say that on the phone. Yeah, chataya. It's me. Yep. I don't know. I'm using everybody else's phone, so I'm always calling people. Oh, right. And someone says, I do so. I'm me. What is that? So, possessive also shows relationships, right? So, and then it goes beyond kinship. There's also body parts, but it, it still goes beyond that and clink it to say, you could say, um, it's raining on me. It has dawned on us. So in, but Klingit thinks about those things differently. So it's like our upon us. And so the possessive ones work in, in slightly different ways. And there's other things you might say. Do to us a goo, ha to us a goo. We're changing the possessive pronoun and conjugating the verb with that pronoun. Objects and subjects? Everybody online want to tell me objects and subjects? What's an object? What's a subject? Excuse me, Lance? Yes. What do you mean conjugating? You say that a lot and I don't know what it means. Okay, so when I say conjugating a verb, you, so the verb, there's, there's three general ways to conjugate a verb. One is I'm going to say who's doing the verb, or I might be saying who the verb is you know, affecting. Who's the, well, I'm going to give away the answer, right? <laughs> the subject does the verb, the object is the one who the verb impacts or is directed towards. So example of conjugating verbs, so love, if that's our verb for English. I love you, you love me, we're a happy family. Right. So, so I love you, I love him, I love her, I love us, I love lamb, you love me. Right. So these, these are conjugating verbs. And in English, it's kind of straightforward because the words are detached. Uh, in Clinket, the words are in a very... The, the pronouns are in a very specific location. They're locked into the prefix of the verb. So, for example, I love you. You love me. I love him or her. He or she loves me. 
Uh, and then it could go plural beyond that. So the first thing we start to study is how to change those objects and subjects in a wide variety of combinations because that's a lot of what we sort of communicate, right? I saw that person, um, you know, whatever. And so I was cutting fish, you were cutting fish, you was cutting fish. Um, we were all cutting fish. And, and so when we conjugate verbs and clink it, the first step is changing the objects and the subjects. Who's doing it? Who's it getting done to? Right? The second way that we conjugate verbs is by changing what we call the verb mode. In English, we would probably call these verb tense. Right? So you say, uh, I will drink coffee. I'm drinking coffee. I drank coffee. I won't drink coffee. I never drink coffee. I always drink coffee. I drink coffee. I didn't drink coffee. Let me drink coffee. Right, so the, I would have drank coffee. Yeah, I would have drank. I would have drank coffee. There's no way I can drink coffee. So all of those. And so what we did in English, we did what? Drink, drank. Drunk. Drunk. Drinking. Drinking. <laughs> but in clink it, that verb would change in, in, in really dynamic ways. Really dynamic ways. English wouldn't understand. I just have to poke at English right now. Uh, and so that's the second way to conjugate verbs is for mode, which is basically saying, what are we talking about as far as the verb goes? And then the third way we might conjugate it is by tying concepts together, right? So I could say, yuck a. That's the way to take coffee, nach yuck a. It's good. It's good. He, she, or it is good. Ich setin. That's the way to take coffee, nach. I saw you. I saw you or I see you. Yuck a ich setin. It's good to see you. I've tied those two concepts together grammatically. So. Those are the three main ways that you conjugate verbs. Any other questions? The whole goal is to really just sort of demystify it. But in order to do that, I've got to throw a whole bunch of paper at you and a whole bunch of tables and a whole bunch of exercises. <laughs> um, but then next thing you know, you're like, oh, yeah, OK, I can say that. OK. And so the funnest thing was I, I did an exercise where I got a bunch of these conjugations with an elder. And it was like every possible subject, object thing I could think of. Right? So, like, um, so we look at these pronouns. There's first person, second person, third person. Singular. First person plural, second person plural, third person plural. Right? So if we were talking English, we'd say me, you, him or her. Us. Y'all, them. Then there's like a fourth person in Clinket, so you'd be like someone, and then the objects, there's something as well. And we'll talk about how those work. They're, they're super dynamic in Clinket. Like when you say at u, you're using a, a fourth person non human pronoun. So there's a lot of different pronouns in Clinket, a lot of them. Uh, I'll show you where the table is so that you can. Um, look at them. As you look at this section on nouns, you're actually going to read about all the clinket pronouns that exist, right? And you're going to know them all by Thursday. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we're going to start looking at how to use these things because it's really the key to speaking. And, and really, one of the things with clinket is if it's all built into the verb, you have to memorize all these different tables so you know how to sort of maneuver all these different things around. Okay, we'll go a little bit more, and then we'll take a break. Everybody just repeat after me. So these are the independent ones. Again, these are the only ones that have tone marks, and they all have tone marks. Ach, e, du. Ach, e, du. Ach, e, du. Ach, e, du. Subjects. Chat it. Right. So just go chat it. 
خط ای 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 خط Um, because it, it's a zero marker, right? Which is really interesting, because in, if we were to use Clinket grammar and speak English, I would say uh, the object. What's the object? I guess it's not a good thing to say in Clinket. We could say I love me, I love you, I love, right? And so I just had to pull. I don't know. It's hard to do in English because in Clinket it just works. Uh, the other thing would you could say. Um, I said it, you said it, said it, right? And so there is no third person subject pronoun, does not exist. But if there's no pronoun there, that's the one that it is. Here they are, here they are, here they are. Okay, so let's do a little exercise and then we'll uh, take a break and we'll, we'll do something a little bit different when we get back. So now I want you to think of a noun. We'll go around the room. I was thinking about this. I was watching part of one of our classes. If I look on my screen from uh, left to right, I see Kabuch in Washington. I see Yenkachtla Kachtokaha in Whitehorse. I see Tawushitin Ku in California. I see Sisala in White Horse. I see Audagon, maybe in Sitka. And I see uh, Pashuk, uh, possibly in Kasapir. And maybe this is, that's going left to right for me, but maybe that goes right to left for you guys. Is that correct? No, mine's nothing like that. <laughs> okay. Well, no wonder. That's interesting. I thought it would just. I thought everybody would see what I see. But then when I watch the class online, and, and this is funny because um, when we look at the screen, it's kind of like we're looking in a mirror, right? Even to the point where, like, if I got the camera close enough and I wrote something on this board, it would be backwards in the screen. Mm -hmm. One time we did a class, and I was like, "Hey, it's backwards." So I flipped it, oh. and nobody online told me that it was now backwards for them. And so we did the whole class, and <laughs> it was, I guess, he was writing all kinds of stuff, and it was backwards for everything. Well, we that, see it backwards, but they see it right. Yeah, so it's almost like we're looking in a mirror, but they're looking through the other side. Of it, which is, oh, it's like one of those interrogation room mirrors. Yeah, right? yeah. so you guys are on the other side of the two-way glass. But I don't know what your order is, so when we come around, we have Naskinach on this side. There are three on this side. And then we go to the online. And we'll go Kubuch, Yankachta, Shtokaha, Tuwushetsinku, Sisala, Audagan, Pashuk. And then we come back to the right hand side here and we have Dachuninach. So we'll try and keep this as seamless as possible. They're inevitably strange delays. Uh, I will ask you the question. Dasa ijiwu. Okay, so breaking this down, we have da, which means what? Sa is sort of like saying saying it, so it's just combining to form the question. Ijiwu. So what is the e in ijiwu? Close to you, but I wouldn't translate it as. If we were to really literally translate this, right? Because it, we would translate this to, "What do you have?" Right. But I'm saying, so it, what would the response to? Let's say you have a, a cup, and I say, "Dasa Oh, your. Is it your? Your. So this is a possessive pronoun, and then we just sort of keep in mind this is. This is how they function. This is how Clinket functions. It's not, you, you've got to think of the in-between language, which sometimes we refer to as linguistics, but this is how you sort of, you spend a lot of time translating, and then you try to think in Clinket, and then pretty soon you, you do think in Clinket. Right? 
So this, so the first one is dasa what i your jiwu. How does that part break down? Uh, in, in possession, well, possession, G is possession. Jin is hand. They're certainly related. G is possession. And the wu is like for it to be located there? Right? And the wu is to be located somewhere, right? So we say gu su, ya du, we du, he du, you du. It's the same one. And we say ne su, right? Gu su ne. So, or someone said gu su wa e. Earlier, there was a, they had an awesome typo. Gusu war. It's like, oh. <laughs> what? It's, ha, 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 gusu wa. I said, I am at home. Right? So, again, as far as how we're putting these sentences together, dasa ejiu, and then the response, uh, let's say, hin ach jiwu, cake ach jiwu. Kahwe Achjiwu, Kahwe Achjiwu, Kuhida Achjiwu, Kuhida Achjiwu, Katika Achjiwu, Katika Achjiwu, Owakante Hi Achjiwu, Kanda de Gugu Achjiwu. So you can plug in, see, we just, these are fill in the blank type of statements. What do you have? I have blank. Okay? So I will ask each of you what you have, and you can just say, you're using your imagination. I'm not going to ask you to produce it. Show me the money. Uh, but you can just take any noun that you want to. It'd be nice if we said new ones and not repeat, but I'm not going to get too worried about it. And you'll respond with whatever the noun is. But that's not what you can literally say. Ah, gee, woo. That's not a gee, woo. That's not a gee, woo. Nothing. So the Clinket is really another interesting about Clinket is to say nothing like Kestasa. Everybody say Kestasa. 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 So as we learn this little question particles, the Kest in front of it can it means not, right? So it's like not. Because dasa can also mean something, right, on its own, right? For example, I could say, Akneshu awe chukan, oh wait, let's just say, Akneshu awe chat, chuchu, gucha, achatishat, dasa, right? So I'm just saying, there's things at my house, um, fish, meat, uh, a cup, a fork, whatever, right? And so it can just become as this things. And you see this in stories where they're naming things, right? Like they had all these furs, they had all these hides, which was that's clinket money was hides. So it's a kak dugu, zisk dugu, chenwu dugu, dasa. So that dasa means and all kinds of other things. I'm making a list and there's all kinds of other things. Kesh dasa is nothing. Keshdasa. But the interesting thing about keshdasa, when you put that into as a noun, it turns things negative, right? So we say achji wu, kesh achji. So the wu falls off because it's not there. Keshdana achji, keshkakwe achji. Whatever goes into your country music blues song, right? <laughs> and then. The same thing happens with verbs, right? And this, it, it blew my mind because I was talking trash. About, well, I was having a discussion with one of my relatives. And we were angry at people. This happens sometimes. And uh, I said something like, and they don't know Klinkit, and they don't know our culture. And then he said, and it blew my mind. 
because that's how you say it. they don't know anything. But it puts the verb into a negative form, which was just mind blowing. For me. Sorry, I got distracted. Dasa ejiwo. Kesh dasa achi. We can again. You can make it up. You can make it up. Uh huh. I have nothing. Kesh dasa. Then we say kesh dasa achi. Kesh dasa achi. I don't have anything. Kubuch dasa ejiwo. Chayu achiwo. Eh. Yen kachta dasa ejiwo. Kuhida achiwo. Stokaha dasa ejiwo. Dana achiwo. Achuni. Who <laughs> 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 Ish ach jew. Pash look dasa e jewu. Huakan ach jewu. Okay. Dasa e jewu. Dasa e jewu. Una Dasa e jewu. Dasa e jewu. Touch the cat at. Ach, Jim. Ha, eh. Yeah, okay. Nas, The old man at the head of the Nas. Okay, good job, everybody. Okay. Um, let's uh, take a break. Let's say seven minutes. Come back. We'll do something a little different. We'll keep going. We'll do weather. I have a question about something I was listening to. Uh -huh. The Ida Bessie recordings. Um, they say, Plesh Wasaku Wasa do a say buzzer. Uh, what is Wasa do a say? Say that. What was the last word in that again? Plesh Wasaku Wasa do a say buzzer. <laughs> I think I think it's English. Yeah, I think it's English. So you could say, um, uh, "What's up? What do spell? What's up? What do spell? You know, <laughs> keys." And I'm asking, how do you spell it? So I think that's what they're. I'd have to hear it. But my guess is that's what they're saying. And sometimes people joke with stuff like that because it's a way to just. Exercise conjugations because some people say "ke no," right? I don't know, and so they just sort of have fun with it. But in other cases, sometimes, like maybe there is no verb for something yet, um, and so like you'll work on ones, and sometimes you'll either try and come up with one, uh, or maybe you'll use something as a placeholder until you could look it up, like. Um, Sakate is going to be my proposed verb for ice skating because you could say, go to skate. Let's go skating. And go there's, to there's skate. no other Kate type of verb root, so I'll put that up to the word committee and uh, I'm ready. I have to go catch the bus. Okay. Yeah, it's cheese. Yeah, so. Tuesdays and Thursdays come back. Yeah, Anytime. Uh, you know, I'd like to stay, but unless somebody can give me a ride into downtown. I get up and catch the bus now. Okay. So. Okay. Well, maybe if you come back, we can talk about rides and stuff before it gets to bus time. Oh, okay. I'm not sure who's going that way. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, did you get like 10 minutes? Yeah, I, I, I got 10 minutes. Okay.
there was some intent. Yeah, when we reconvene. Oh, okay, good. I just didn't, I just didn't, didn't want to spring it on somebody and at the last day and go, oh, guess what? I just missed my bus downtown. <laughs> Everybody go in that one? So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lance? Yeah, I'll see ya. You, you're proposing a first and 23rd or um, midterms? Yeah. Okay, can you say that again? I didn't catch the middle part. Uh, you were proposing October 20th and the 23rd for midterms? Like 20th and 22nd. Okay, I'm not going to be available on the 22nd. I'm going to be in a conference in Vancouver. Okay, we can sign you up for the 20th. That works. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, we'll do our sign-in sheet in a, in a week or two. That way we'll, we'll have an order so everybody can go in order. Um, and we'll, we'll just do our words, just our words, and then we'll um, get back into our studying after that. Okay. Okay. Ms. Cheesh. I don't know what you guys did there, but I don't hear an echo anymore, so that's good. Oh, and, and I'm hearing myself echo. Oh, you hear yourself now? <laughs> when I, this last time, yeah, yeah, I can hear myself echo. This voice is in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. And, but you guys are using some kind of Apple TV or something to connect, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My suspicion is that's what's causing it. So if you guys are hooking into uh, a monitor, I don't, I don't know if it's possible to look at uh, a laptop potentially, or to connect to, if you're connected to a monitor, to connect through some other type of cable, that might help take care of it. Sometimes it's better if you have like headphones, but that might not be possible. Oh, two of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because yeah, last time I, I, right I could hear myself, or I could. Oh, you could. Or I could. Um, I could hear what you guys were doing. I was playing through my speakers on my computer, and then. My, my, uh, There's a little bit of a delay going from here to Juno, you know, right? But okay. when we're hearing that, did you hear that a little bit at the beginning of the uh, story? Okay. Yeah. I, kind of like oh. uh, I heard it, but anyways. No, it's because that's. I had no nuts. So I think. That's what I was wondering. If you turn this off, and then you have to turn that light off. You guys that are online, do you hear yourselves when you talk? Does it bounce? <laughs> well, I mean, does it bounce you back through your computer? Say that again. Well, I was just trying to see it. Well, maybe I'll ask when everybody else gets back. I was trying to see if anybody else was having the problem of having their own voice bounce back to them. But I'm, I'm wondering if it's um, because we're getting sound from the big TV on the wall and with the microphone coming in from the laptop, if with the time delay, if that's what's sort of causing that bounce back, that reverb. Well, if that were the case, I think it would cycle and then you would get a feedback loop. But I do think there's something going on with... So what you might try to do is... Uh, connect, just watch through the laptop perhaps, uh, maybe try speakers for the audio if you need it to be louder instead of going through some sort of, because I think an Apple TV is also using an internet connection or a Wi-Fi connection and there may be some strange loop that we're getting caught into. Colleen? Colleen? Uh, 
when you when you talk on this, do you get feedback? Do you get an echo of yourself? Uh, fake, but um, I usually use headphones. Okay. Maybe that changes it. I'm not sure. Okay, this is interesting. Talking to Colleen, I don't get an echo. But when we talk to you, there's an echo. You think you can tell who you're talking to? I should just immediately repeat myself each time just to make everybody go crazy. <laughs> That's like the last part. That's The best was when we were first trying this. And we had in white We got caught in some crazy loop, and he started laughing, and he this big booming laugh, and his laugh was like repeating itself. It was kind of scary. But it was also awesome. Okay, so we're reconvening. We've got Keiki joining us from Sitka, let's say. Keio Satini. I need to write. I need either I need to write home or I need to run for the bus right now. Yeah, and so if anybody is going towards downtown, is anybody heading downtown after class? We live on campus. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody's going right after okay. the bus. Thanks. Like a later bus or. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, everybody take out a piece of paper. Or maybe you got this dry erase board thing that I talked oh, about. Oh, yeah, I forgot. What? Look, I brought one to fact. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gigantic dry. There's little, like, you know, portable dry erase boards. I think it would be a good idea to have a chalkboard. We could use paper, too, but I, I like the dry erase board because you can just sort of show each other. Whatever. If you guys don't listen, <laughs> whatever. I'm not going to break it. It's like, you guys are bad. <laughs> If you guys are peshi dushke, whatever, that's fine. Be terrible. Oh. So, this is what we're going to do. Everybody's going to pick a noun. Yeah, next time tell us in it and then we'll do Okay, cook. <laughs> Try a race sport. Try a race sport. Night There you go. Night Okay. So we're going to go around. Uh, let's do this. Spelling? We should. We're going to. If everybody gets a chance, you'll say uh, your name. And then you're going to say the noun that you have in your possession. We're using our imagination. It can be any noun you want to. Other than, you can't say like clan names. I don't want any big fights starting. I don't want bad vibes coming back to me. But most nouns are uh, up for grabs. So the reason you have a piece of paper and a writing utensil. Okay, so you're going to write down that person's name and the noun that they have. I guess I should probably do this as well. <laughs> no, terrible. Somebody give me a piece of paper. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to do something with this information. Who would like to go first? Okay, Shkahadi. Yachte. He has Yachte. Yachte. 
And somebody like the spell Yachtet for me. Why? 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 Because I told you I Y A underline X T Hi to E. Correct. A yach away. Y A underline X T high toned E. But do say you that hook. So make a yach say Hashak a jach jiwu. Sumik is S U M I Q. Wasa would do to spell Hoa Hashakach 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 Gook, somebody has to give it a try. I'll try. Okay, you can finish. Uh, underline X, A, L, uh, A, X, uh, glottal stop, high A, C, H, glottal stop, gwash. There was one correction. Underline X A L A K apostrophe or glottal K high toned A C H apostrophe. The cut you han so as far as this comes from a verb. When ha is built into the front of a verb like that, it's a contraction of ha wu. That's the way they call in a ha wu hair. Sha is the classifier, and it means a lot of times in terms of these specific types of things to have that quality. Right, so you could say shijin or shijini. It's armed. Shigushi. It has a thumb or a dorsal fin. Kach is a variation of the verb root cuts, which means sharp. A sharp haired. We know where he lives in our class. Porcupine. Yeah, a oh, wet porcupine. And it's cheese. <laughs> Who would like to go now? Talk day? We don't have all day. Right? Say your name first. Kayo Seu. No, Kayo Aksai. Aksai. I was trying to think of that last bit. Shita, Everybody say Shita, Shita, Shita. What's up with the spell? Ah. L. Look. L high toned I T A A. Ayah away. L high toned I T A A. Shita. Ayo, is there a way to spell your name? I don't know how to spell it. Okay, I'm going to propose underline G, high toned A, A, Y, O. Uh, and it's yo at the end? Yes, it's okay. Well, so he, I think, has the same name as my uncle. Uh -huh. And my uncle says Gayao. 
Okay. So are there like versions? Okay. So let's go with underline G, high toned. Where's the tone? I. Is it I? I think he says I. Okay. Let's uh, let's do no tone. Names are always hard. Underline G, A A, Y. A A W. It's your name, but tell whoever you want. <laughs> I hear it at the beginning when you say it. Okay. Kitta. That's three out of uh, however many we have, which is a lot. Kook. <laughs> of course, it's going to be. I think I do that. Okay, so the word. Ekkakis, Okay, everybody repeat after me. Ekkakis, 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 Who wants to spell this one? T L apostrophe, high tone I. Underline K, K, A, K, high tone E, E, S. The first I is not high tone. Everything else was Kunachayachawe. T, L, apostrophe, I, underline K, K, A, K, high tone E, E, S. Um, oh, let me back up. Yachte, that's the way yachte. Yachte is the big dipper. Chashakach is a porcupine. Chita, chit is the verb to slide. Chita is the thing that slides. Because the chasha is already taken, it's a saw. So chita is a knife. Because you slide through and then something gets cut open. Ekkakis, that's the way Ring. Ring. Ek is a finger. K is on. Keys is a bracelet. Bracelet on the finger. Okay. Do so way you that ka. No way I saw you. Kuhida, Kuhida, everybody. Kuhida, 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 Kuhida. What's up? What did they spell? K O O H I D A. Close. K O O X, high tone E, E, D, A, A. Now, where? Oh, was, oh, I spell it N, A, A, W, high tone E, I, Y, A, A. Kutrich. K, high tone O, O, T, underline X, E, E, C, A. A. I do so well. You don't go on. So what do you need to get that to a song? On a cadet. Ah, Jesus. On 
Kunakadate. Who would like to uh, spell out? Dasa? Kunakadeh is what you're asking for? Yep. Under uh, underline G U N A uh, X A D E I T. Very close. Is it, a K it is a K instead of an X. <laughs> and then that's Kunach Isuku. You nailed it. Underline G U N A K. A D E I T. At the front of it is Puna, which is something different, something else. Often, Puna is a very powerful word in Klinkit, because sometimes, like Punait, means like a monster, usually. Although it really just means a different thing. Punait, uh, Punait Kanai. Is oh, our clan it's opposite? Kuna mm -hmm. And in this case, Kuna Ka Da At. Some, something different, on, around, thing. Word compounds are, we'll look at compounding and click it and how it works. It's a uh, sea monster, like a wolf in the ocean, kind of. Okay. Wasco. 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 Ah, Wasco. I got the Guy hunted it. He put its skin on. There's a story. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Online a gang. Right. Name and your noun. Staguha Waktana Achu. Tokuha Waktana Hey everybody Waktana 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 Somebody who has that spell Wasa, what did we spell? W A A undertone K D A A N A. Close. W A underline K D high toned A A N A A. The wa comes from the person's eye. But one of the things that you see, like when we had ek kakis, ek is a long vowel, but it gets shortened when it becomes a compound word. Generally, what happens is when things compound and clink it, they get short, <coughs> their tone gets flat, except for the last word. Waktana. Right, so wak becomes wak. So this is why we practice our vowels moving back and forth between long and short, high and low. It do okay. a sock. Oh, say your name one more time. Stoguha. And how do you spell your name? Um, Bard L T high tone A, D U H low tone A. Okay. L T high toned A G U H A. Sheesh. Oh, are you, are you hitting us with the inland spelling here? So A A. A. 
Teach. Wouldn't it be L T A A? Okay, it's a quid to E S apostrophe A X W E I L new word D U new word Y I do E E T. Ta. 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 Okay, do you say you have to Wait, wait, wait. What's up with this now? Uh -uh. Somebody who hasn't spelled yet, how do you spell? G W I tone I E high tone E I L. Yes. <laughs> Maybe my look gave it away. I figured that just came out. G W high toned E I L. That's the way get caught in a test it to a bad. Bad. Hey, who's gonna go now? Huh? Oh, how do you spell your name? In Kakla. Y A N K A X T L A and uh, the A is high low tone. Hey, yeah, high um, and high low should be high, high and low. low. I think you're saying in Kakla. Yeah. It's probably a high tone A that I'm hearing in the kuch and an underlying X. In kuch ka. Okay. Kuch ka. Goodness, sheesh. Okay. Yeah, you can write with carrot. A little hat. I do so you that. It's all the online gang. If you haven't gone yet, give us your name. Give us a noun. Sisana, aya ah sayi. Na yadi. Hagu, ah nei day. Hagu. Nayati. 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 Spell it. Spell it. Eat it. Somebody spell it for me. Anybody. N high tone A A Y A T I. Yeah, a way. N high tone A A Y A. D I. Okay. Cheesh. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, Cecil. Oh. how would you spell that? Um S high toned I S E L E. Ach tla tunach aya kahin. Uh spell it one more time, sorry. S high tone I S E L E Cicela Cheesh And this is Salish Shiksha Ah how come I am Ah you okay Cheesh Okay 
Gook, who's next? Kuwuk, you had to talk. Sit to Hudzi Achjiwu. Achjiwu. Okay, hold on. Do you want the. Uh, there's a Yakutat name for that one. Siknun. Gasa? Siknun. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well. So there are two words. There's sit to hootsy and siknun. And you can pick whichever one you want. No pressure. Is it sit to hootsy or? Sit. Sit to hootsy. Sit to hootsy. And yeah, we'll go with that one since. Uh, the other one, though, what? Let's see it again. Sick noon. Sick noon. Uh, we'll go with the uh, first one you gave me. That's right. Sit to hootsy. Everybody say it. Sit to hootsy. Sit to hoozy. Sit to hoozy. Sit to hoozy. Wasa would to dispel. Okay, in the interest of time, I will spell it for <laughs> you, Han. U G S S high toned I T apostrophe. Now another word. T U X high toned O O D Z I. Sit. That's the way sit. Glacier. Sit is glacier. Two. On, on. Inside. Inside. Hootsy. Bear. Yeah. Bear. Where it's got this Brown relational bear. suffix or possessive suffix on the end. Brown bear in the glacier. Would the two be high tone? No, it gets flattened in this case. So when you got two hootsy, it gets flattened. Do you think that's like from English? Because hootsy. Because well, in, in Yagatat, they call it Tzik Noon. I'm not exactly sure. The Noon is... Um, that sounds maybe like that's Iyak or Atma, maybe? Well, I don't know what the Noon is, but the Tzik comes from Tzik. Oh. So that gets, so it has to do with the black bear. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Is that, that's Glacier Bear, right? Is that yes, it's a Glacier Bear. Sorry, it's well, a Glacier Bear. Tzik to Hootsi. Okay. Who has not gone yet? Oh. Then me. Oh, sorry. Kubu. K U I tone underlined underlined X. K U W high toned U underline X. Uh, and just fair warning. Uh, you should know everybody's names in here after this. <laughs> Keep your list handy. That's totally fine. But uh, we can't just point at you. <laughs> but, uh, third one over. OK. I do saw you. That's who was going. I can go. Uh, Park Luke, you had to a sock. Kuakin Akji Wu or Guakan Akji Wu. Okay, very repeat. Kuakan 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 Everybody want to spell it? G low tone. Underline G. Underline G. 
U W A A K A N. Close. Underline G U W A K A A N. That's a way to take a dinner. Yes, it is a deer or a peacemaker. Right. And well, <coughs> anybody explain the peacemaker part in one minute? They're the, mo they're the most peaceful animal. They are peaceful animals, but let's say. Well, okay, that's well, not necessarily true. Well, More people are attacked by deer than they are by like sharks. That's why. Every year. Well, that's why they chose the name for the. It's a symbol of yeah. peace and clinket, that's for sure. So, uh, uh, is there like problems the way they move through the woods or something like that? The way they carry themselves is the way it was explained to me. Mm -hmm. the, the graceful movement. Right. That's why we reference them to like peace. It's just the way. Yeah, and, and so, like, let's say your clan and my clan were having some big gnarly fights. So, we brought in somebody else who mediated that and resolved it. Then we might. Give them a name, blank Khan. And it would be some noun. Gunha Khan, Shawat Khan, Dikitkiya Khan. Right? And then um, that would be their name. And then they would also have this role of helping us to sometimes resolve internal disputes or disputes with other clan. Okay. Mchish. Who has not gone yet? Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. how do you spell Hashuk? Uh, it's not a Klingit name, so it uses a non-Klingit letter. That's totally fine. We're diverse. But it's spelled P-A-A. Uh, and then an L with a slash line through it. <coughs> and then? Oh, sorry, did you not hear the last? Oh, you no. Here. <laughs> We're just waiting. We're like, we could, we could make a barred L. It doesn't take us that long. <laughs> sorry. Internet's not the greatest. That's okay. U U K is it? Just one U. One U. Okay, so U K. E A A push down U K. P P A A Bard L U K. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I heard. P A A Bard L U K. And can you say it for us one more time? Oh, no, he's spelling. Pashu. Pashu. Oh, there it is. Pashu. P A A R L U K. Finish Chish. Koyan. And if you guys want to use in the writing system, I make lots of jokes about it, but you can totally do that. I will respect that decision. And if you are using Sumit uh, also is an Inupiaq name. Uh, if you were, if we're bringing in other languages, other letters, it's 100% OK. It's awesome. OK. Who's not gone yet? We're going to have time for our game. Sure, team, can you hear me? Uh, <laughs> testing, testing, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's flash. Shoo It's just flashing and freaking me out. Uh Shu Gina Ya Aksai. Are they going? No, Gook. Thank you. We're all having fun. Take a sack. Uh Tay Yukho Tungi at Ah Tiu. Ah. Oh. 
Okay, let me back up. We had Shua team going, and then we're going to get to the phone. Shua team, what is your name? Gustier Kinder Trinity. G U S apostrophe Y high toned E. Next word. K I N D A C H O O N E I D high toned I. That's the way it's like. Is that a sea pigeon? Is that a swallow? Some sort of bird is a. Well, it's a duck. It's a duck. Dove. 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 as well. So it is a straight up to the face of the clouds. Okay, now we're back to Keiki. And you wanted to do telephone, is that right? Ah. Uh. Okay. Can you see? Do we want to use the extra long name for that particular type of device? <laughs> of course, we're going to do a two day ukotangi at akju. We're going to do cell phone. This was the one that Ruth Demerts told me. And somebody's going to spell this for me. You had to at You had to at key. The literal translation is pocket thing through which somebody talks. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, no, the thing is already in. Okay. <coughs> the spelling, word number one. Underline G. A L T. High tone U. That means pocket. It literally means inside of a hip. Next word is the letter A. That means it's. The next word, T. High toned O, O, N, high toned A, underline X. That means through the inside. Next word, Y, O, O. This is a preverb that links in certain verb modes, usually repetitive, kind of means to and fro. Next word, underline X, apostrophe, A, D U L period. High toned A T G I. You atki. Somebody is speaking. The last word is at. High toned A T. It means thing. Congratulations, you are winning so far. <laughs> the, let's make it complicated. TV show. Okay. Who is going to go? I don't think we've got everybody yet. I do say this. Oh. Isai Koa Keiki. 
Would you like to spell that? L G E I K H I. L G E I K apostrophe I. Now you all know how to say cell phone. <laughs> Did anybody not go yet? Is that Tushasin Hu? And then I see there's a couple more. Sitka, perhaps. I'll go ahead and go. Okay. Tuwu Latsin Hu. Kutia. Kutia Achgijiwu. Okay, okay. Kutia. 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 <clears throat> K-O-O-T, high tone E, E, Y-A-A. Kutia. Kutia. Ya K. Anybody else? Next time. Ah. To wu shet sin khu. T-O-O-W high toned U. Next word. L-A-T-S-E-E-N. Next word. X apostrophe high toned O O W. So we have this list of names and nouns. We might end up adding to it on Thursday. What we are going to do with this is we've done just a little bit of dasa ejiwu. So there's the question, dasa ejiwu. The answer to that would be And then the next question could be Oh, I didn't. I guess I gotta have something. Kune. Kune. Uh, underline X apostrophe U N E I. And I am going to have Kachanes. Kachanes. T L A underline X A. N E I S apostrophe. Okay. So, so then I could say Dasa Achjiwu. The response to that would be Kachanes Ejiwu. Then I might say Dasa Dujiwu Tsakwishdiyit. What does he mean? Ah, uh, so this is what we're going to start with on Thursday. We'll also move into our discussion of nouns, compound nouns, pronouns, all this business. We might do some my name, your name, his or her name. We'll do some of that business. Maybe get into weather. You know, we'll see how it goes. And then I'd bring any questions you got. Anybody got anything else before we do close it up? Will you, be, will you be providing a list of names? I suppose I could do that, although, we, oh, we're supposed to be writing them down. But yes, I will do that. This for, just so you can have it. Any other questions? Hmm. 